Hello, my name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and I'm going to show you how you can edit your still images in Optics, either as a standalone or as a plugin for Photoshop or Lightroom Classic. So firstly, we're going to get our image into Optics. Now, if you're working with the standalone version, it's just a case of going File, Open. Then simply navigate to where your file is, and we'll just hit Open here, and it opens up in Optics. Now, when you're in Photoshop, we can either apply a filter to the layer itself, or you can just right-click here and convert to a smart object before you come up to go Filter, Boris Effects, Optics. And this will then open up Optics for you, and you can choose whether or not to apply the previous mask filters. I'm going to say no here. The advantage of bringing it in as a smart object is, of course, you can always go back and make changes later. Now, if you're working in Lightroom Classic, all we're going to do is right click on the clip that you want and we'll go edit in Boris Effect Optics. We can now choose whether we're going to edit the original, edit a copy or edit a copy with a Lightroom adjustment. So if you've made any adjustments within Lightroom, this will then take those into the file itself. And just as before, this is going to open up the Optics interface for us. And once we're in the Optics interface, everything is going to work in pretty much exactly the same way. Now, I'm going to be working in the standalone version of Optics, but where there are differences between the plugin and standalone, I'll call them out as we go along. So let's take a, a quick look in the top left-hand corner. We have our layers here. We're going to start building these up as we begin to uh, add our filters. We'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, in the middle, we have our viewer. This is taking up the biggest amount of real estate because it is the most important part of, uh, of what we're doing. Obviously, this is where we're going to start seeing uh, the image as we start to build it up. Probably the most important buttons here for us to begin with are this uh, 100 and fit. So these control the uh, zoom in the viewer, whether we're zooming to 100% or fitting to fill. And we can zoom in and out wherever we see a number here we can just click and drag it uh, and this is the the zoom value here so let's take this back to uh, fit to fill uh, over on the right hand side we have our histogram which is where we can start to see what we're doing with our colors and below that is our parameters now we have no parameters uh, available to us yet because we haven't chosen a filter yet as soon as we choose a filter from the bottom list here so we can uh, take a little scrub through. It looks like we've got quite a lot of filters. Well, actually, we've got more than that because all of the filters are also built up into categories as well. Uh, and as we click through here, we can see the different categories that we're working on. Now, the sheer number of these effects can be a little overwhelming at the start. You're free to explore these yourself or stick with me a little bit longer and we'll go through some of my favorites. And if you don't fancy doing any sort of scrubbing along here, you can also use the wrap filters button right here. And I'll click on this. And instead of having these wrapped horizontally, these are now going to spill down vertically. So you can just uh, scroll down like this as well. Uh, I'll just turn this off uh, and we'll come in and take a look at our first filter. Maybe we'll start off with something very visible like a, uh, a film labs thing here uh, and I'll come in and I'll just click on one of these I'll click on cross processing and now we've done that a few things have changed uh, up in the top left hand corner in the layers we can see we now have a, uh, a new layer which is called cross processing I can change this to whatever I want just by clicking and typing in here underneath it we have a number of presets so every filter has a number of presets to help get us started. And I can just either click through these or use the arrow keys to find something that I quite like. Actually, that cross-processing one looks pretty good. It also means that over on the right-hand side, again, back in those parameters, the parameters have now been updated. So we can see all of the different things that we can uh, change with a particular filter. Uh, and with our cross-processing, 
we can come in and maybe adjust something on the on the curve as we want to here or you can go you know really deep into the RGB at this point maybe I'll just bring this back down with a an amount slider so that it fits quite nicely okay and if I'm happy with that and that's all I want to do with it I can now save this out if you're working on the standalone version what you would do is you would come in and you would go file save or save as resize if you wanted to make it bigger or smaller let's hit save here and we'll call this one portrait uh, intro out uh, and we could save this out as different types of files either as jpeg png or tiff now if you save it out as a tiff file which i'm going to do here we also get the option of saving the setup with the image now the setup is all of the effects that we have applied to a particular clip and if i hit ok on that what that means is that i can come back at any point to a clip that i have saved before so maybe i'll take this one here and not only would it bring up the image it will also bring up any and all effects that i have applied to a particular image let's just come back into this one for us now this is a little bit different when we come into the plugin versions and i'll show you how we're now in the optics plugin running through photoshop and we have a similar setup i'm going to come in i'll just keep this at the green one here so we can see there's a slight difference between the two and if i go up to file you'll see that i don't have an option to save that file out through the plugin what we do have in the bottom right hand corner are these other buttons we have reset cancel or apply and if I hit apply it's going to come back into Photoshop for me and it's going to have applied that effect and we can see optics right down here I can turn this on and off and that will now process out that effect for me now of course as I said before the advantage of having this as a smart layer means that if I just double click on optics now I'll come back in and I'll be able to apply the previous masks and filters and I can make any changes that I want to. Maybe I'll turn this blue this time, take the amount down a little bit, hit apply and you'll see that that updates immediately in Photoshop. And if we want to save this effect for later, maybe we can use it on a number of other different images. We can just do file, save, setup and that will just save out all of the filters that we have built up on that image. And this works the same whether we're working in the plugin version or in the standalone version as well. We can always save the setup or open the setup here. And those are the very basics of bringing in an image into optics, adding in an effect, and then saving it out either as a separate file or back into your host application. If you want to follow along with me and you haven't already downloaded Optics, then head over to boriseffects.com where you'll be able to download a free trial.